Hello friends, for today's video we're going to be looking at episodes 21 through 25 of Attack on Titan. I want to say I have calmed down since last week, because if you missed last week's batch review, I was kind of just chaotically telling you over and over again that I was pretty sure it was Annie, which I can confirm that that is correct. But I don't know that I've calmed down. I think it's more so that I am sad. <laughs> sad and numb, because what a devastating way to end the season. Kind of hopeful, but also ominous and tragic. And we'll get to all the reasons why. I'm going to go back to my usual structure of going through each of the individual episodes and then give some final thoughts at the end, especially because this is the end of the season. So I kind of want to conclusively wrap up thoughts for the experience of the first season of Attack on Titan. But jumping into episode 21. So this one is titled Iron Hammer. And I was so upset. I wrote, no, she transformed again. And I guess that makes sense. But it's just the way in which she was able to go back and forth between transforming into a Titan and then going back to a person. And it's so aggravating because I just knew the second they were having their hopeful, silly, humorous, oh, it doesn't count until we get back. And you're like, well, they're going to die. Levi's whole team, we just got that whole thing in the previous batch of episodes where they're like, trust us, Aaron, look at our bite marks on our hands. And we're a part of a team. And even though I knew it was coming, I was still so upset. Petra, and I'm so sorry that I don't know all their names. Her death was the one that really stuck out to me for reasons that are not just from this episode, but another episode in this batch. But anyway, her and another one of the individuals starts just slicing. I'm going to call her Annie because I know it's Annie at this point. So they just start slicing Annie up and Aaron's amazed at how fantastic they are, how good and skilled they are. And then she just has such unfair advantages <laughs> and watching them all get crushed. You're like, no. And then seeing Levi just stoically being sad, basically, when he witnesses, when he has to see each of their bodies and then he goes after the Titan. So I initially wrote, no, she transformed again because I was upset. And then I wrote, let's go. <laughs> Obnoxiously with periods in between because I was like, come on. I was pumped when they started fighting her. And then, of course, they all got slaughtered. I also wrote great music because it was. So then Aaron does finally turn into a Titan. And I wrote, is he going to recognize her moves? Because previously in training, you see the two of them going up against each other. She has a very distinct fighting style and certain moves that it seems the other characters don't really have. So I was pretty sure. And then he starts to say her name and I'm like, I know I, in the moment I was uh, getting all hyped because as you saw last week, I was really waiting for them to finally reveal it. So he starts to say it. And then she basically kicks his head off and, uh, and then swallows him. And again, I'm, I have no idea what to make of this because initially I was thinking, do they want Aaron? Why, why would they want Aaron? It would make more sense if they just wanted to kill him. If it's like the military police are somehow involved. That's the theory I'm referring to. But I would think they would more so want to kill him so that he can't have his secrets get out. But maybe because they seem so set on getting him back alive, they somehow use them to create more titans. Something to that effect. I don't know. <laughs> and it's driving me up a wall. No pun intended. I'm excited. I'm not actually upset. I'm not saying it's a flaw in the show. I'm excited and it's a good thing and it's good writing to cont continuously keep me intrigued and on my toes and wondering what the heck is going on. And another thing I want to compliment is I have faith in this show that it knows what's going on because there are some stories that you get into and later on things wrap up, but it feels very much like the writer or the creators of the story depends on the medium. It can sometimes feel like they just made stuff up as they went and then they retroactively tried to tie it all together. But Attack on Titan, it feels like there is a lot of secrets that are slowly, we're getting hints at and they will be revealed. And when they are revealed, it feels like we're going to recognize if you go back and look at the beginning that it was there the whole time. So I could be wrong about that, of course, I don't know. But currently the way it's done, I have faith that it knows what it's doing and that it's been hinting at things the whole time. I just don't quite know. And it makes it really fun to theorize. 
Getting back to the event of this episode though. So I had written, will he recognize her moves? And then I put poor Levi. I also wrote, he's gonna kill her <laughs> because I was really ready for Levi to go into rage mode, which he doesn't really. I mean, he's just cool, calm, collected Levi. And I have to say a lot of people told me before I watched the show, I mentioned this, I think in my very first batch reviews that I know next to nothing about Attack on Titan, except that people would say, get ready to love Levi. And I love him so far. But Erwin, I don't know what it is. I love Erwin so much. I think he's such an awesome character and I want to learn more about him. And also last week I was showing a parallel between Aaron the first time that he sees, or maybe not the first time he sees, but you as the viewer, the first time you see Aaron witness people coming back in from outside the wall. And Erwin is there and he looks devastated in that scene. And so it's like, this has been weighing on him for years and years and years. So I just really want to get more into that character. Not that everything needs to relate to Full Metal Alchemist, but in my head, I feel like Erwin and Levi are kind of like the Roy Mustang and Riza Hawkeye <laughs> of this show. And I'm not upset about that. And then episode 22 is the defeated. I put Levi is the sneak peek of what's to come character in video games. So I'm so sorry for those of you that couldn't care less about video games. But I do find that there are a lot of things about this that make me think of video games or make me want a video game. And for those of you that are video game fans, you know how there are certain video games where they start you off, where you have all your powers and then something happens and then you don't have any of them. So it's a sneak peek of what you'll eventually be able to have. Or you play as some other kind of character and they're absolutely amazing. And you're like, what? What the heck is even going on? They're so powerful. Am I gonna get that powerful? And I feel like Levi is that. Anyway, right after that, I wrote, no, not Levi's team's families. What are they doing to us when they're showing us all the families being like, oh, I'll have to make extra food because I think they're coming home tonight. And I'm just like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this to us? Uh, so that was so sad. And then the one person that keeps coming up, the father, Petra's father coming up and talking to Levi, which that's not the next thing in my notes. I have a lot more notes in between those things, but just kind of continuing on with the family members when they go up to Levi and they're like, oh, I really want to talk to you before I see her. I want to surprise her. And they're just so wholesome. <laughs> You're like, no, why? <laughs> why? Anyway, so I wrote these slow moments are great because there are some slower moments in this episode after they've kind of accepted we've been defeated. We failed. And these moments of them sort of picking up the pieces, sometimes literally, but sometimes figuratively. I think that these are the kinds of moments that I appreciate in any kind of action story is when you get the moments in between or the moments after or the moments after defeat. Specifically, these are some of my favorite moments. And I do think that certain stories like to sort of sit in the triumph of it all. And I think that can be really satisfying, but the triumph, always, the triumph always feels so much better when you have these moments too, because I can just imagine in future seasons when we finally do defeat, I guess maybe the Titans, I still don't know who the ultimate enemy is at the end of the day, but I just imagine that we, when we finally get there, that it's going to feel that much better because we see these lows. And I always say my favorite stories are the ones that have the extremes. They have those really, really high highs and they show the low lows. So this show is continuously showing me the lows and I look forward to hopefully getting some of those really great highs. I also, I could use like a, a little bit of humor here and there. And I, I think that this show incorporates just a tiny bit here and there. It would be completely, uh, I think, unnecessary to try and throw in humor where it doesn't belong. This is primarily a more somber story. It is more of a devastating story where you're just constantly seeing loss after loss. So I think that having just a tiny bit of sprinkles of humor here and there is the right amount. It would be lack, I think it would lack, um, it, like it wouldn't be fitting of the tone to, to have too much humor. So I'm glad that it doesn't have that much of it. Um, I just think that it's all coming together so well. <laughs> And I'm really falling in love with it. And I really have high hopes that my, like my fingers are so strongly crossed right now that it's going to, what, I don't even know what that meant. I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, don't, just, I, I even said at the beginning, I'm like, I've calmed down. I'm not as chaotic this week. And now I'm just like, it's so good. But also what if it breaks my heart or what if it sucks in the end? So I'm just going to go back to my notes. I wrote, 
I love Erwin and Levi. We talked about that. Um, Mikasa is awesome when she saved the guy who went back. A refresher, if it's been a bit since you've watched the show or you're not, you know, following along necessarily. So Mikasa is with Aaron. He's recovering. He's on this cart. And there are a few different scouts who tell Erwin and Levi that their best friend growing up, his body is still out there. And we're like, we'll, we'll just say he was missing in action. It doesn't really matter if we have his body or not. And they're like, we can't just leave him. We've known him for our whole lives. And they tell him basically, no, it's an order. Come on, let's go. And then they do go back for their friend's body. And now they've led the Titans straight to them. And this is so heartbreaking for a number of reasons because you really feel for why they would do this. And in a different story, I feel like there would be some kind of lesson that, oh no, the heroic deed always wins. But this show is more like, no, they were given an order for a reason. They're going to cause more trouble. And then they did. The other one ends up dying. So then there's only one of the three of these men left that were childhood friends. And Mikasa ends up saving him. But, oh my gosh. <laughs> when, first off, when Armin looks at the bodies on the carts and he puts together like, well, we could dump the bodies that we do have, and that would distract the Titan long enough for us to get away, because there's no way for them to use their maneuvering systems, because they're way too out in the open and exposed. So they're like, we have to try to reach the wall, and we only have so much time. The bodies are probably our only answer. So Armin has this thought, and then, and then when Levi does, though, I didn't even think that the body that they were going to dump would be Petra's. It didn't even cross my mind. And just that like almost expressionless face that he has because it would seem he's probably faced a lot. I want to know Levi's story also. Or when I was talking about I want to know his story, I want to know Levi's story. But he just has to kind of always be very focused. And I think I use the word stoic, but he always kind of has to have the stoicism. But oh my gosh, it's like just him watching it happen. Is it so heartbreaking? Oh my gosh. And I don't I don't know why. I almost cried at that part. It was so emotional. I can still visualize her stupid body rolling. Ah, it was the worst. I hated that part. So I did write, um, you know, throwing uh, Petra's body was the saddest part of the season for me. And then I wrote Levi giving the scout the wings was very moving. Oh my gosh, I'm getting sad. <laughs> I'm getting sad thinking about it right now. But I was expecting that Levi would... I honestly thought Levi might slap the guy or something or that they would have this, this is why you can't, like they would pretty much put salt in the wound, right? To really hit home, this is why we gave you this order. But for him to give him the wings for Levi to give, um, is it Dieter? I'm not sure. I don't know if he's a relevant character can come back or not, but I missed his name, uh, the pronunciation of it. But when he gives him that and says, this is how I know that they lived. This is how I know they, you know, they existed pretty much. This is how I remember them and honor them. That, and then the man just starts crying. Ugh. That's what I mean by the slow moments are great. That was great. Obviously, that was kind of an action-oriented scene, edge of your seat scene as far as the Titans coming. But still, I feel like these moments of human-to-human -human interaction are so fantastically done. Um, but anyway, my notes were a little chaotic because things would happen and I'd be trying to write and then the next thing would happen and I'd start trying to write something for that and then I had another thought that was back with the first one. So these are going to be just a tiny bit out of order. But I also wrote the flowers again. Has Aaron been injected with something from the flowers? Why with those flowers? So I early, early, early on in the season mentioned that I don't love when any story really tries to take your head and point it in the direction of what they want you to see. I prefer when it exists and then you can pick up on those things on a rewatch or what I was talking about earlier where you're like, oh, it's been there the whole time. And the flowers early on, I noticed the flowers immediately. Pretty much the first time Aaron was able to transform uh, very quickly and protect Armin and Mikasa and then there was those flowers and I'm like, oh, the flowers. And then immediately Armin's like, well, those flowers weren't there before. And I was like, stop it. Don't do that. <laughs> so I had commented that I think some of the foreshadowing is a little heavy handed. But since then, I really feel they've like pulled it back. And I'm not sure if it was heavy handed because of the 
of the dub or if it was heavy handed because early on they want you to know really badly like I promise it's not just going to be destruction the whole time. I promise there's like something else going on. There's multiple things going on and I want to give you those hints but I'm afraid you're going to miss it. So really pay attention and know that there's something else I promise we'll get there. I'm not really sure but since then I feel they've done a much better job of not throwing everything in your face. <laughs> and I think that the flowers now, they've kind of backed off in telling you, hey, pay attention to these, but they keep showing up. They, they're there a lot. And I do wonder, ah, are they some kind of, uh, I don't know, are they something that like manipulates and can make things transform? Are they some kind of like remnant based off of Titan blood or something? If we were to go back to those two Titans that were killed by Annie would there be flowers over there? Were there flowers? I don't know. There's something with the flowers though. And I wish I could understand what it was. Um, I also wrote great, great, great full circle moment, though I wish they hadn't reminded us just before. So when they come back in, right before Aaron is somewhat hallucinating or, or more so he's uh, dreaming as he's recovering. And it's right before they enter the wall. And he thinks about that moment where he was watching them come back in and that they were really devastated. Uh, the soldiers or the scouts that were coming back. And this time when he wakes up, it's the reverse. He's no longer the child watching. He is one of the scouts. And now he actually understands what they were going through when he watched them walk in. And I really loved that scene. But again, to clarify what I meant in my notes, I wish they hadn't just reminded us in Aaron's dream slash memory that this had happened before, because for me, it would have meant so much more if you had allowed me to have that aha. And that is such a minor critique. I'm not upset about it. I just think it would have hit even harder if he is so filled with dread, remorse, sadness, all these, you know, these low feelings. If he was filled with those, and then he looks out and sees these kids who seem hopeful and optimistic and he hears people like he heard when he was younger being like, oh, there goes all our money. Just we're just feeding them and fatting them up this, at this point. And if he's hearing that, but he's hearing it as one of them, I think I would have been like, oh, my gosh, it's like at the beginning, but reverse, you know, I think I would have had even more of a connection to that scene had they not been like, hey, we want to remind you, look at how full circle it is. So I don't love that. But again, this is the minor, minor, minor ist of uh, criticisms. This is a minor criticism is what I'm trying to say. Aaron crying. <laughs> when Aaron cries in this moment, when he's just got his like his arm over his head and he starts sobbing basically on the cart, because <sighs> he's almost always angry, right? He doesn't really show a whole lot of other emotions besides anger and eagerness to <laughs> fight. And I do think this voice actor has done a great job in showing him growing and having a little more humility. And he starts to really recognize when he needs to learn and take the wisdom from other people that is being offered to him. I think that that actor is doing a great job of that. And the story, of course, is writing him in a way where he's growing. But still, you don't really see sadness quite like this. We've seen almost angry tears, but this is different and it hit really hard. This whole episode, was this my favorite episode? It might have been one of my favorite episodes. And again, the father, the father going up. So this is where I actually wrote this note. No, not Petra's dad with a bunch of exclamation points. This is an example of they didn't feel the need to straight up tell me like, look, pay attention. It's exactly like this thing from before. So I wrote Mikasa touching the scarf after Aaron asked if she rescued him again. Nice, nice touch. So she is talking to him when he's recovering on the cart. Again, I told you before, these are slightly out of order, but he asked her like, did you rec rescue me again? And then she goes to like kind of touch her scarf. And I just really loved that very subtle part and that very subtle, I don't even know if she recognizes that she's doing it, but I think it says a lot that it's almost like, she always feels like she has to because he rescued her when they were kids. Anyway, so I just really appreciate that moment. Episode 23. Uh, this is called Smile, the name of the episode. And I said, they needed a new intro after that devastation because the like, da, 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 
da da da. That made sense after we saved Trost, but it does not fit here. I know. Gosh darn it! I, I <laughs> I'll tone it down. Um. So after they defeated Trost and we got this new intro about halfway through the season, it made sense. One is halfway through the season, and two, it was like a nice after the Trost arc going into other stuff, and it just felt so. It just filled you with like, yeah, you know, those kinds of emotions. But after the last episode ending the way it does, where it's just sadness all around, to have that be the intro for the next episode, I was like, get out, stop it. I was upset. I'm not, I'm not mad at the show. I'm not saying that the show is at fault for like, it was somehow weak uh, and they didn't think ahead. Or, I'm not saying it's an actual criticism. I'm just upset about it. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm upset that they would have that right after how sad everything was. But anyway, wow, I hate the military police already was the first thing I wrote. I've hated them for a while because I've been pretty sure that they are awful and that they know things or that some of them know things or that they're involved in corruption. So just immediately the one being like, oh, you have questions? We'll just handle everything yourself. And then he just goes right back to gambling. The one I wrote, Marlo, I think was his name. I don't know if you're gonna make it, buddy, <laughs> because he's too pure. He's too him being like, I'm gonna change things from the inside. And they're all just like, okay. Now I'm wondering if this character is kind of being introduced because he is going to be a more pivotal role in having some kind of communication between the scouts I think he's going to be like snooping around, he's going to discover stuff, and then he's going to come to them. But I think he's going to be conflicted with his moral, his morals and his principles, thinking like, well, I'm not supposed to talk to them. They caused all this destruction that we see in the last two episodes. But also, like, there's just something not right. And I think he has potential to be a really interesting character. Or he's going to die. But speaking of him and his principles, there's a whole back and forth. And he is berating himself because he didn't shoot one of the other military policemen who's obviously involved in illegal activities. And he was wondering, am I just... I, I thought I was above it. I thought I was going to change the course of the river, but instead I'm just part of the flow. And I, or I get, he's, I think the exact quote is being swept up by the flow. And I really enjoy this interaction and just the thematic things that are being touched on here because yeah, so many people I feel like want and aspire to greatness or they want to be a beacon of change. But at the end of the day, a lot of people are just living life day to day and that can really weigh on you. And I always have a soft spot for characters who are like this, who want to change things, but also feel helpless because I think that is a very realistic mindset. I think that's realistic outside of just this story. I think so many of us feel that. So I really like this characters, again, this their potential because they're a little too idealistic right now and they're a little in need of some education, we'll say, in the ways of the world. And I think they're going to get that. I think they're already getting that and we're seeing that. And that, again, unless they die, and then in which case, forget everything I just said. See, we see Annie put the ring on after she talks to Armin. There's a whole thing about once she does transform, right before she says, I'm a failed warrior. And I just wrote, hmm, like, what the heck? What the heck is going on? Ah. So I'm not going to shout over and over again that same sentiment. I'm just going to move on from that. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what she means by that. I'm afraid that we're going to get her backstory with her dad and him being like, I don't care what anybody says. You'll never be a monster to me or something like that. He says something along those lines or always come back to me something. And I'm just like, no, stop it. <laughs> I'm going to be so upset. And then, and then I'm going to be feeling bad for her, but then I'm going to feel bad that I feel bad for her because I'm gonna be like, but she killed Petra and all of Levi's crew. And I don't, I don't want to feel those things. I do. I do want to feel those things. But at the same time, I'm like, <sighs> Can they just give me a second? But I don't want to say, you know, it's like, I, I know you know. You understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, so last thing for this episode, I wrote Titans can't transform underground. So they seem to keep hitting this point. I think it's them trying to keep us away from what the actual situation is. Uh, twice now, you have seen Aaron not be able to transform when he's underground, because initially they put him in that well and that flashback, and they were trying to kind of experiment and see his level of control over when he turns into a Titan. Can they study the Titan? Those sorts of things. And when he was in that well, he couldn't transform. They're like, oh, well, maybe you can't anymore. And then later when he goes to touch that spoon, 
that's when he does. And they're like, well, I guess you just needed a purpose. That's what it is. And then you see the same thing happen here. They try to lure Annie underground. She refuses to go underground, which I'm like, that's because she probably knows she can't transform down there. And uh, she doesn't go. She transforms into a Titan. They go underground themselves. And then Aaron tries to transform. And he's like, I don't understand. I have a motivation this time. I did the self-harm thing. Why can't I transform? And Mikasa has this, like, it's because you're in love with her. Basically, she doesn't say those words, but she kind of asks, it's because you have feelings for her. Is it because you care about her? Something along those lines, right? And he's like, uh, and you do see he does have hesitation because at the very end, he doesn't want to harm her. He has to believe, like, there must be a reason, which also props to Aaron as hate-filled as he can be towards Titans. The fact that he tried so hard to be like, Annie, I I know there has to be something else. And he tries to reach out to her humanity and you're just like, oh. So that was very, uh, a great character improvement on his end that he was willing to extend that compassion even though he is so upset about everything that has transpired. But regardless, getting back to this theory, they think that it's just that he can't do it because there's these conflicting motivations. He wants to save his friends. He wants to protect his friends. He wants to defeat Annie, but he also doesn't want to hurt his friend being Annie. So, and he also, it seems to think like there must be something else going on, but I'm like, no, they're trying to distract us. It's because he's underground. It's because he's underground. I don't understand why they can't transform underground, but that's my theory currently. That's something about being underground. It's something with sunlight, I would think, because that seems to be an idea of the ones as well that were killed by Annie, that sunlight affects them somehow. So I don't really, I don't really know, but something about being underground and or being away from sun sunlight, I think is part of it. Okay. Episode 24, which was called Compassion. I wrote two things. Strange, that explosion sounded like, so one of the military police, that's like, Erwin, are you behind this? We're going to arrest you. You're going to be executed. That guy. Um, he, right before he says all that to Erwin, he hears Annie transform into a Titan and then there's that quote. And you're like, huh? <laughs> Again, what the heck is going on in uh, in the Capitol? Have they been experimenting on people? Have they been turning people into Titans? I want to know. And then um, I wrote Titan fight, Titan fight, Titan fight. Because <laughs> I was so ready for this. I've been saying since I think the first batch review, I was saying, hey, I think that the Titans are probably people and that somehow we're going to turn into Titans and we're going to get Titan on Titan, you know, we're going to get Titan fights. And so I've been pumped. We got a tiny bit of it, obviously, earlier in the forest, but this is like, all right, let's go, you know, that kind of feeling. That's it. That's all I wrote for episode 24. And then episode 25, which is titled The Wall, which a very apt title, especially after seeing the post credit scene. I just wrote, here we go. And then I also starred um, Maria, I think is how they say it. Um, I would say Maria. But the one, I was writing the names of the walls. Um, and Rose and Cinna, something like that. So I just wrote those and starred them because I'm like, mm, were those the, I, I've been trying to piece together. I'm like, how are the cult, the wall, I forget what they're called, the, the religious people in this world. I'm like, how are they related to everything? And I, I do feel like oftentimes when you have a religious group that seems like, oh, they're just crazy. When they're in there, you're like, they know something. They're, they're not just believing in this make-believe story. There's something going on that led to this level of worship. And it's some, it's, it's almost, again, it's almost like a distraction where you're just like, oh, those people are weird. But they have information if only we're willing to pay attention, like that kind of thing. And I have been, I mean, we got a sneak peek of it, it would seem, at the end of this season. But I was wondering, and I said earlier, I don't feel like the construction of these cities makes perfect sense if they had the time to construct them. I was talking about how I'm like, why would they, why would they do it this way? Hmm? I, I don't know. So I feel like this is, it's all tied together. I don't know how, but I feel like it's all tied together. I wrote, Marla's going to get to the bottom of things in season two. Um, one day they can go outside the walls, bird symbolism. Okay, so there's a Titan fight. The Titan fight is the majority of this episode, and it just goes to show how much destruction occurs when the Titans fight each other. It was really cool to watch, but also you're like, oh, dang, there's a lot of people that are dying. And I did appreciate that they would show... Uh, they would show Annie seeing the people that were dead. Meanwhile, Aaron's just charging through. <laughs> um, but then he has that moment right before 
where he sees her, and then she crystallizes, which has to do something with the miner's tail that they showed, uh, which they showed really fast, but I was like, wait, 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 what's all this text? <laughs> and I had to try to read the miner's tail, so I feel like there's something to do with that material. I think I can't theorize anymore because I don't know. I'm just gonna be like, I don't know, and leave it at that. But she crystallizes, and uh, Levi, I did like Levi swooping in and being like, don't kill our only chance at answers. But anyway, after all of this, when it, luckily by capturing her, it kind of helps the scouts and Erwin specifically from just facing immediate execution. And he has called, you know, people are going to be questioned and Armin and Sean are going to be, um, they're called in for questioning and they're walking along and Sean says something like, is it worth it to, to sacrifice? They have that phrase that they use a few times about when you're not willing to sacrifice anything versus when you are. That's not the wording, but I'm sure you know the phrase. Uh, I unfortunately didn't get a chance to write it down word for word, but he's asking Armin, do you really think it's worth it? And then Armin, and, and what's the purpose? Like, what's the end goal? Even if we do that, then what do we get out of it? And you see this bird, and Armin watches this bird, and then it flies over the wall. And so my takeaway from that is just and especially tying it to Armin because he talks about when he's a child and his parents like that freedom when we can finally be be free that that feeling of when we can finally go outside the walls and we can live again not just individually but as a society without fear and i feel like watching the birds was kind of that for him and then interesting post credit scene yeah what the heck somebody's got to notice that right somebody from their windows going to be like wait a second <laughs> There's like a titan in the wall. So I look forward to season two. This was great. I'll give my overall thoughts for the season. I think it was completely fair that it started in a way that was not necessarily showing you just how much depth there was going to be and just how many great character moments you were going to actually have. Uh, I think that oftentimes you have to start these sorts of stories in a way where you get people's attention really quick. Because if you don't, sometimes these writers do not have the opportunity to keep going with the story. So I think it was a lot of flash. One of you had mentioned in a comment, and I wondered this as well, if part of my less than absolutely thrilled feelings about the first 10-ish episodes were in part because I started with the dub. And I do think that played a role because I do think that the sub voice actors are incredible and the direction that they've been given for these characters, I think just suits my personal tastes a lot more. Uh, I don't want to go as far as to say I don't think that the English voice actors are as good because I don't know what kind of direction they're being given and what they're being told to bring out in these characters, but what they were being, what they were bringing out in the characters, it just felt like a lot of a one note reaction feeling for each of them. You know, it was like Armin is tentative and scared and buddy smart. And then Aaron is like angry all the time. And Mika says like quiet, mysterious. And it just felt like they were caricatures almost as a result. And I definitely think that the sub has reduced that is so much. However, I don't want to take away from the fact that I think these later arcs were just even better. They, I think they were better. Not objectively, because maybe some people really love the beginning, but for me, I thought that the writing improved. I thought that the pacing improved. I thought the development of the characters was phenomenal. The growth, the ways in which you're seeing characters start to come into their own, the way they change from the events that they have witnessed. I just think all of that is where the show is really shining and the mysteries that are there. Whereas in the first 10-ish episodes, probably less than that, I'm just saying 10 because I watched them in five uh, episode chunks. But I think that first chunk of the season, the very opening was so much an effort to grab your attention. And it was a lot of destruction. It was a lot of death. And I think that we had to kind of get the ball rolling we had some time skips in there. The training was sort of brief. It was just enough, but it didn't really feel like it was doing the same kinds of emotional hits that the latter half of the season was doing. So I don't by any means think the beginning was bad. I think it served its purpose and it was building into what we got at the end. And we wouldn't have been able to have that had we not had the beginning start the way it did. 
I just think, though, that it meant that we got better exponentially as we went, which is great. I don't think that's a bad thing. I can see some people leaving early and being like, I don't know if this show's for me. It's just a lot of, like, shrouding, you know? I could see some people maybe having that view, and so this is the kind of story that I would encourage people, like, oh, you're, you're probably going to need to, when you give it a try, if you give it a try, you're probably going to have to give it some time because it really takes a while to build, but then once it does it really is fantastic. And I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily because I think Vagabond, which I love Vagabond, I think that Vagabond is very much like that. Some of my favorite actual book series are like that. I praise Witch Hat Atelier all the time, which by the way, I need so many people to get into that because when that anime comes out, I'm going to be so excited. But that's not what we're talking about right now. But Witch Hat, I think, starts kind of cutesy and sweet, but then some of the deeper themes that are a little more subtle than other stories. But those things really come about gradually. And then Full Metal Alchemist, one of my absolute favorite series of all time. I pretty much always have to tell people the first arc, not as good. <laughs> not as good as the rest of it, but it get, it does get there. So I think some stories, they they just need time to build their foundation. And this one I would categorize as such. Um, and then I don't think I have too many overall criticisms necessarily because there maybe is the occasional scene that I'm being a little nitpicky with, but I I don't think there's too much that I'm upset about. The music is so good. Oh my gosh, the music is great. And I think that the, as I said, the sub voice actors are fantastic. Um, I just think all around this first season was very, very good, and I have a feeling it's only going to get better, and I have a feeling I'm going to be really upset <laughs> at various points while watching, but, you know, I'm excited about it. Uh, thanks so much for a great first season. This was so fun. I know that there's probably some overlap between Avatar fans and Attack on Titan fans, but I know that for some people, you probably didn't partake in watching me get through Avatar and you're new or you are here from my book channel because you saw like, oh, she's going to watch Attack on Titan. Okay, I like Attack on Titan. Whatever the case may be, uh, I'm just always so grateful that so many of you are so delightful and so nice and that you're so good about not spoiling things for me and that you're really respectful to each other. So just a big thank you. I can't wait to keep going. I tentatively can't wait to keep going, which I know seems like an oxymoron, but I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. But thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later. Bye. It's a Titan variant. Look at the way it moves.